Hi, I'm Ashy, and today I'm going to paint a cardinal in watercolor and it's going to be a winter scene and um, the cardinal is going to be sitting among some berries on a branch in snow. So this was inspired um, by, we kind of call her our adopted grandma. Um, she, my best friend's mom, she really loves cardinals. She has the whole mentality like when you see a cardinal then your family members are watching over you and are are nearby and so this is actually I'm painting it as a Christmas present for her so that we can give it to her and she can have um, hopefully a beautiful cardinal that she can display in her house. Let me know in the comments if there's any other like meaningful um, symbolism that you or your loved ones kind of ascribe to. Um, I think that that's kind of a beautiful image that it's just like their spirits around and you can feel their presence and you have that visual reminder that, you know, even though they might be gone, you still are loved by them and they still love you. It also makes for a great gift. So if you have somebody in your life that is into cardinals for the same reason, you know, you can follow this same kind of tutorial and paint something for them as well. I'm going to start by just doing a very simple sketch of what I want. So I know I want a branch coming out from the side here and it's going to be kind of pointed down and we'll make it um, have berries on it after so there'll be little kind of sticks coming out with berries on them but I'll just paint that in as I go and I do have my reference photo off to the side so that I can see um, kind of what I'm doing the shape of the bird is the biggest thing so the bird is going to kind of be off to the side this way a little bit and we just need to now draw the bird shape and this is, well, I don't know. This is the first tricky part, right? So painting it's going to be possibly tricky because I've never painted a bird before, but we'll see. So we'll kind of make this round shape, kind of oval shape here for the bird's body. So there's my, my oval body. And then we kind of stick a circle head on top of him and then just join the head to the body like so. And then we'll see his wing sticking out just a little bit here. And then his tail will come off this way and kind of be kind of broad and flat looking. Okay. And then his legs would come out from his body about here. Something like that. So I'm going to actually erase those legs because now that I look closer at the picture, it looks like his legs are almost like tucked in. And you kind of just see, oh my gosh, my dog is going to drive me crazy. You kind of just see his little feet, his little toes coming out and grabbing the whatever he's sitting on. So kind of sitting on the branch here. And then here is the other one, his other foot.
So now I'm going to kind of rearrange where that branch is going um, so that it makes more sense with what I drew. And then there's like some snow on top of the branch and then this foot it's actually in the picture he's standing on one of the berries and I think that's kind of funny so I'm gonna make him standing on the berry over there and then over here there's some snow on the branch or some ice that he's sitting on okay so let's now come back up and get that shape of the bird a little bit more. Refined. I don't know why I paused so long between those words. Okay. So his wings here and then you can kind of see the wing folding over a little bit and coming up and kind of it feathers out a little bit but it's like that give him just a little bit more movement on his back there and then he almost has like a little neck roll here. There we go. There is our basic bird shape. And now the classic cardinal mohawk comes up here. And I'll just make it kind of like a wispy look when I'm painting it, but in general, there's his little mohawk sticking out. Okay, so you don't see that top edge. So much. And then from his mohawk, kind of comes down. It's a little bit rounded, but not too rounded. And we're going to put in his beak, which kind of curves down. It's not that big, I don't think. They kind of have stubby beaks a little bit. And then kind of has this little I don't know little shape on the side there okay And then he kind of goes straight out into his chest from his beak there. And he's a little bit fat. A nice round bird.
And then down here we go kind of in a little bit more. He's not as round on this side as I originally made him, so let's clean him up a little bit. Make him come in and then down and then kind of goes around that way and then that's where his tail comes out. Okay, I feel like it looks like a bird, so I am going to go ahead and draw in the shape of the like classic black mask marking. Um, I think it'll be easier to paint it if I have it drawn in first. And I want to get that placement of the eye correct and make sure that I preserve like a little bit of a highlight around the eye for where the light reflects off the shiny um, pupil. Okay, so all of that will be kind of black and then the eye will have some highlights where I try to preserve the white. If I don't succeed at preserving the white, I will go in with white gouache because I have no problem with using white gouache on my watercolor. <laughs> it's no big deal to me. <clears throat> okay, now I don't want that pencil to show up through my watercolor, so I'm just gonna take it and kind of um, lift some of it out with my kneaded eraser. And I mean, you can rub the eraser on it, or you can roll it. Um, this time I'm just kind of dabbing it pretty firmly and then lifting up a lot of that extra um, graphite or whatever the lead is made out of. I think it's graphite. And then that leaves me with a very faint outline where I can then paint it in. Okay, I'm gonna use my big mop brush and this is a Princeton Select brush and I'm just gonna wet the entire background and then I'll use wet on wet to create the background sky color. And it's gonna be very faint but it's gonna be kind of like a crisp, clear blue. While I'm doing this, I need to try to think about preserving some white space for the snow. But again, if I don't succeed at that, I'm going to go back in after and use um, white wash to paint in some snow. And I am fine with doing that. So. I'm going to wet up this blue that I already had in my palette and try to get some more of the bright blue. I need to clean out my palettes a little bit. I have some green in there, but I think there'll be enough that it doesn't matter. You can't really see it. Okay, and then we're just going to kind of put in that color in the background. And I can use a paper towel to lift or my a clean brush to lift some of it back out. So then I'm just going to take a 
clean, damp brush, so mostly dry and lift out, kind of scrub out the paint around the eye where I know I want to highlight later, and I don't really care that that's a huge spot because I'm going to be painting the bird lady later anyway. And then same thing, I'm going to kind of lift out some of the paint that's above this branch where I know that there's going to be some snow or some ice. And then around some of these areas where I think I might put some berries. I'm going to do like a, use the paper towel and do like a little bokeh effect. I had never heard the word bokeh before I started painting, but anyway, apparently it's little circles of highlight or lighter color. And in the background, I kind of want some of that effect also. So I'm just going to do it a little bit lighter and just lift out some of those areas um, while it's still wet. And it's starting to dry a little bit. Um, but I'm going to re-wet, tap in some more deeper color, let it bleed out a little bit. And I just want the background to kind of have an atmospheric, like, loose and textured effect. So kind of tap some in, lift some out, just kind of play with it. This is um, my first time really experimenting with kind of playing in this way. So we'll see how it goes. I can kind of splatter in some clean water too to get some of the um, water repelling some of the pigment and that'll make it look like maybe it's snowing a little bit. There's going to be some white spaces where the water is repelling that pigment as it's drying because it's drying at a different rate. Clean up some of those hard edges. Okay. So you can really see down here, well, I don't know if you can see it. I can see down here that that is creating a nice effect in the background. Um, up here it might be a little bit too wet still. I need to wait until it's more the damp stage instead of the wet stage because if you're dropping just more water on wet, it's not going to do that much. But dropping it on damp will create more of an effect. see what happens when I drop some wet paint into that wet with some splatters create just a little bit additional texture
Now I did tape down the edges of my paper. This is a pad. It's not like a solid block. So it will warp a little bit. I taped it because I wanted the crisp like white border, but also um, to help limit the warping since I knew I was going to be doing that wet on wet background. At this point, I just need to let the background dry and then come back and I can start painting in the bird, the branches and the berries. Okay, now that that's dry, I need to go in and, well, first of clean up this hard edge a little bit that was created right there. No big deal. Some of the hard edges I don't mind, but that one looked funny right around where the beak's gonna be. Now I'm gonna paint the bird. So I need to mix up the correct color that I want for the cardinal. And I do not have a red color. <laughs> I clearly need to get one, but I have this pink that's like a permanent rose. So I'm going to mix my pink with a little bit of orange to get a warmer color. And then we'll add in a little bit of green to make it a little bit more um, lean toward brown. I need a lot more paint than that. But same idea, just the orange, the pink, and the green to make like a cardinal red color. Okay, I think that's pretty good overall. Maybe just tone it down a tiny bit more with the green. And then I'm gonna use a light wash of that over the whole bird except, well, I guess I can go over the black spot too because it'll be black later. So it doesn't really matter that much. So kind of around the whole bird and looking at just getting a nice even wash in of this color. Including on the wing. and the beak because his beak is also red. I am going to kind of make a circle where his eye is going to be just so that I know where that is. And I'm already going to go in and create just a little bit of texture there where his mohawk is. Now try to kind of keep it a little bit wet because the goal is to bleed in some color wet on wet here. We'll see. This is, um, it's okay paper. It's not 100% cotton, so it does dry faster than 100% cotton, like a nice paper, but we'll see if 
we can get the job done here. So let's take some more concentrated paint and tap it in kind of around his chest here. And we're gonna leave some areas where it might look like there's a little bit of a highlight hitting him. So down here, it would be more shadowed. And then over here, kind of around the wing, I want it to be a little bit more shadowed. Oops. And then I want around his face to be a little bit more intense also. And to create these little wispy mohawk, I'm just using the very tip of my brush and dragging it outward to create that texture. Okay, so right here, it bled out a little bit, so I'm gonna clean that up, clean off my brush, make sure it's pretty dry, and then come back in and lift up some of that paint and hope that I can get it mostly lifted up. And then just kind of dry it because I just introduced water to that area now, so it's wanting to bleed out some. So dry that area up a little bit and just kind of erase it as best as I can. Errors happen. That's okay. Okay. All right, now, whew, he looks pretty decent. Uh, this is kind of the awkward stage, right? We just have one value in. It's just this lighter value. It's not anything super interesting at this point. It's kind of a blob of red paint. So we will go in and now start adding in more values. So again, I have a thicker paint here, and I'm gonna keep building those layers. I kind of started already, but I'm gonna now create an even more um, dense version of the paint, and that will make it a darker value. And I'm trying to do some wispy strokes here too. It's gonna bleed out, but it's just gonna start to get a tiny bit of texture, especially on the areas where it's drying a little bit more. So like here in his wing, it's pretty dry already, or sort of dry already. Okay, and then I want to take a gray color, so I'm going to use Payne's Gray and mix it with a little bit of the pink. It's going to turn 
a little purpley color um, and then mix it with just a little bit of brown to warm it up some. Oops, that was more gray. I wanted brown. And that's going to be to add into the areas where he's not, ooh, way too much water, where he's not as um, red. He's a little bit more brown in places. So some areas on the wing. A little bit on his head here, tiny bit of this color coming down toward where it is black. And then on his tail also, it's going to be not as intensely red. It's kind of faded off into the background. Here on his um, chest and belly area, I want it to look like there's some feathers ruffled out just a little bit. So just to get some of that texture, I'm going over the edge of the line just slightly. Okay. Let me go in and add another layer to the beak. There we go. And then I want to get some gray color. This time I'm going to use a black instead of a paint's gray because I don't want the bluish tone to it. And I'm just going to tap a tiny bit of that in at the base of the beak so that I get a little bit of a color bleed between where the black like i don't know what it's called but little like mask area around the eye is and where the beak is and i can kind of start creating that shape there very very subtly okay now I can't do a ton else on him until he's dry, but I'm going to add just a little bit more intensity into the tail because I think it's too pink instead of red. And then we'll just add a little bit of the black also to tone it down, but I just didn't want it to be that pale pink color. Did not like it. There we go. Okay, 
So I can't really do anything else on the bird right now, but I can go in and start to do like some of the branches that aren't touching the bird. So I'm gonna get some brown mixed up here. Um, I don't want it to just be a burnt umber because that's too warm. It's not very, um, it's not like a really deep cool brown. So I'm gonna mix my burnt umber with some black and some Payne's gray to get a more cool and a darker brown. And then I'm just gonna use my brush and kind of wiggle in some branches. So I'm gonna go kind of heavier and lighter pressure to make them really jaggedy looking. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of Payne's Gray and tap it in on the underside to get some um, variety in the value. So it looks like there's a shadow. Okay, now here we're gonna bring it in and do the same thing with kind of jaggedy, but I'm trying to preserve <laughs> some kind of light color on top to look like there's some ice or snow on the branch. I don't know if I'm gonna succeed, but we will see. Again, I'm probably gonna go ahead and use some white gouache after to paint in some snow. And then again, there are berries just kind of all coming off of this in various directions. So some of them are more in front, some of them are more behind. And I'm just going to put in some little twigs or sticks to connect the berries. And then again, just a little bit of very concentrated Payne's Gray and parts of this have dried, so just kind of damp my brush, dampen my brush, and then get it to bleed out a little bit so that it's not a hard line for the shadow. So I don't want my brush super wet when I'm getting it to bleed out. I just want it to be damp. And some areas can be a little bit of a harder transition than others, but overall I want it to be fairly subtle. So there are my couple of branches. Um, I feel like maybe I want more, but we'll see after I make some berries how I'm feeling. Now the berries are going to be a very similar color to the cardinal, just to kind of unify the look some nice red berries for this winter cardinal. Oh, well that was lucky. Look, I splashed red paint and it happened to go right where there will be a berry. That's crazy. And then we would just want to leave a little bit of a highlight on some of them. Some of them can be a little bit 
lighter. Some of them can be a darker value. So kind of just tap in a little bit of a darker color for a shadow on some of them or all of them. Again, just get some variety in there. There are my berries. For the most part, I'm happy with them. So I'm just gonna deepen up this one here in the middle, because it's giant and it's like a weird color. So I don't want it to stand out that much for... It's already gonna stand out because it's huge, because I couldn't make a good circle. Okay, now we can go back into the bird and start working on some additional details. So I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now, um, quite a bit smaller. And this is, let's see, this is a size four round. And I'm going to try to do the black part of the face. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. Essentially, it is really just black. So I'm going to go in and try to get that shape defined and then after I get the shape in I can always go in and darken it up some more if I need to so let me get around the beak first And then it can kind of look like it feathers out a little bit because it is feathers. So, okay, let's get the circle around the eye 
in and then that kind of gives me the guide for going around that. And then it kind of comes down onto his chest a little bit and out toward his eye. And then it feathers out just a little bit. Okay. So, I can paint that in. And then I will get a thicker paint to do the line here between the top and bottom of the beak. And just trying to use the lightest touch ever so that it's a very, very thin line there. sort of thin. I did not succeed on that, but maybe I can fix it. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush off and try to fix that because I don't like it. It's too dark and it's too um, thick, so I'm going to try to lift up a little bit of that paint. And there we go. And I'll go back in now. Oops, with some of my red and repaint the red beak. Just feel like his beak also needs to be. A little bit bigger, like wider, not longer. There we go. Okay. So I need to let that area that I just did dry, um, but I'm going to go ahead and paint in his eye. And that needs to be extremely concentrated. And then just leave a tiny little highlight. So I'm trying to make his eye the darkest part there of the black section. And then just leave that little dot for where there's that reflection. Okay, now I can go in and add a little bit more texture to the wings and his body, I guess. Sorry, I'm banging all over the place. So kind of the same idea, I'm going to use this smaller brush to get just a little bit more detail on some of the feather textures and just kind of swipe it as lightly as I can to get very thin brush strokes with the tip of my brush and then some spots I do a little bit thicker because um, their feathers aren't all super thin and fine some of them are a little bit bigger And then this spot that's kind of a highlight, 
I can continue, you know, I can keep that as a highlight, but then just add a little bit of a lighter value of this same color to add that texture. So it still looks like a highlight because it's a lighter value, right? Lighter value than this, but it adds that texture to it. So it doesn't look like just that flat wash. And then down here, I want to get some definition between where kind of the body ends and then the tail sticking out behind it. So I need my body part to be a kind of brighter red. And then the tail is a darker red. Okay. There we go. Okay, now for his wing, we just need to mix up a little bit more of that grayish red. Color. Okay, it's kind of like a brownish gray red color. And we're just going to kind of get that in here on his wing. Okay, so at this point, I'm really just kind of building up layers and adding definition to the bird, adding kind of shadows and um, texture, basically <clears throat> defining further where kind of body ends and wing begins. The same with kind of the tail in the wing here which we already talked about a little bit, but I'm just continuing to build it and make it look, uh, I don't know, more detailed, I guess. And then I can kind of rinse off my brush and pull some of that color up into this highlight area so that it doesn't look like it just stops. Okay, now I am pretty happy with the bird actually. So trying not to mess anything up, I'm gonna go back in and add just a little bit more depth to this black area. Add just a little bit of these feathers sticking out up here around his beak. Um, make it look a little bit textured on the edge here instead of just a straight line where the black ends and the red begins, basically. Okay. Okay, now dry off my brush, get some black. Make sure it's not too much water and try this line thing again. Nope, it's still wet, can't do that. Okay. I think that's okay though. I actually, that little bleed works there. Okay, I do need to do his feet. 
Oh, but I'm thinking I need to wait until it's completely dry before I try to do the feet. So let's do a little bit of white gouache for my snow on the branches. So just kind of tapping it in. And the nice thing is with snow is it has some texture. It doesn't need to be smooth and it doesn't have to be over the whole thing. Um, so if I feel like I miss spots, it doesn't matter. It's great. I love when things work out that way. Like anything in nature, it doesn't have to be like perfect and symmetrical, which is perfect because it's hard to paint things perfect and symmetrical. So I like painting things that are natural um, versus like buildings where it's like buildings pretty well are symmetrical, right? Um, for the most part, they got to stay standing. So we got to try to keep them um, as straight as possible as square of lines, but nature's not like that. Now, that being said, I have enjoyed painting buildings, which I didn't really think I would, but um, the kind of urban sketching stuff that I've been doing, I've actually really been enjoying. Now I'm going to paint some like drops or icicles hanging off of them and maybe it'll look silly and maybe it'll look cool, I don't know. So do that and then just get a super super light wash of gray and kind of tap it in the side and make it look like ice? I don't know. That's not really working. I don't like it. So I'll kind of just blend it out and get rid of it. Okay. <clears throat> just continue to kind of build up the snow here. Um, white gouache, it, it is opaque, but it's not like 100% opaque and it depends how much water you add to it and all that too. So there's some spots that aren't looking as opaque as I want it to. So I'm just gonna kind of add a little bit more of the paint to those areas. And then um, call it good on the snow. Okay, now at the end, I think I'm gonna splatter in some white gouache to make it look like it's actually snowing, um, just cause that's fun. Um, and I want to. And then let's just touch some areas of the bird with some white gouache to give it a little bit of highlights. Maybe it looks like it's had some snow fall on him too. And try to get it 
not too much, but just a little bit. So that spot was really thick. We'll clean that up just a little bit. There we go. That gives him a little bit more of like a gray um, highlight in some spots too. Okay. I think that's good. Now let's try to make some bird feet. So I'm going to zoom in on my reference photo here and see um, basically his feet are kind of like a grayish color. Maybe a little bit of a brown to it. And I'm going to stick with this size 4 brush. I feel like that's going to be a good size. And we're just going to kind of stick some feet out. And I'm kind of using the, the tip of my brush to create like a claw and then doing like a little bit of a pressure stroke to get the shape of the foot. And this one's like really around the berry. That gouache isn't dry, so it's getting a little bit of white mixing with it, which I'm okay with because it is, like I said, the feet are kind of gray. But I'm probably going to have to go back in and clean it up a little bit. And I'm going to put some more red like over him also. Um, over his feet so that it looks like the feathers are kind of coming down around. And then this is all like snowy here. So I'm going to kind of add in some more snow. And he's actually standing on like a pile of snow over here. So let's kind of add it in. Make it look a little bit more here. Full and snowy. Okay. Okay. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Let me come back in over his feet again and add just a little bit more color. And I'm trying to just tap it instead of drag it because I don't want it to blend with the gouache this time. Um, probably easier would be just to wait until the gouache dries, but you know, that would be patience and I don't have that patience, so. We just try to tap instead of drag. That way it doesn't mix as much. Okay, now to add a little bit more of the red. Around and this one I'm not um, as concerned about it bleeding because in reality, I want that little bit of darkness around where the feet stick out. Um, there naturally would be a little bit of the darkness um, showing in the 
feathers. I almost said fur. It is not fur, it is feathers. Oh, come on. I don't just want black feathers, though. And then just a tiny bit more feathery down here at the bottom of the belly. Blend that back up. Okay, I think I'm done with the bird and I'm really happy with it. Now to splatter snow. Now this is just fun. Um, if you've never splattered paint before, I highly recommend it. It's just highly entertaining. So loosen up some white gouache. I don't have a clean spot in my palette, so I'm just going to use this blue spot because eh, it still has a blue hint to it anyway. So loosen up some white gouache and then tap. Ooh, that has red in it. I don't want red snow. Let's try that again. It's because my water is, I was using this red water. Yeah, don't use red water if you're trying to make snow. Use white water. Clean water is better, but I'm too lazy to go get clean water. Okay, now the bigger brush you use, the bigger your snowdrops are gonna be. Also, um, like the more water you use, the bigger your snowdrops are going to be. Snowdrops? They're, I don't know why I'm saying snowdrops. Snowflakes. Oh my gosh, it's getting everywhere. Now, if you want to kind of tap some of them to loosen them up, you can. Um, we had a little bit with the splatter of clean water that we did beforehand. Um, we had a little bit of that effect where it was repelling the paint. And so we got some white paper and you could see that. So it already had a little bit of a snowy look. And then this is just adding a little bit more on top. And we can add it to the bird too. Because he's not immune from the snow. He's getting snow on him too. Okay. Now we can remove the painter stick carefully because we don't want to tear the paper at all. It did bleed out in one spot just a little bit, so I'm gonna take some clean water and kind of scrub out it a little bit and then lift it up with a paper towel. And there we go, now we have our clean edge again. All right, so here is the finished cardinal painting. Um, I am extremely happy with how this turned out. This is the first time that I have painted a bird of any sort in any medium, never done in card, uh, bird in watercolor or in acrylic or anything, but I am really happy with how it turned out. I like the red berries with the red bird and then the snow um, and the kind of atmospheric sky background that looks like maybe it's snowing at the time, maybe it's not, but it turned out really good. I'm just really happy with it. 
So now I just have to find a frame for it and then wrap it up and I can give it as a gift to Grandma Donna. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something today. I hope this inspires you to paint. Check out my channel for even more information and tutorials. Have an awesome day.